All right, buddy, what are we doing today? Uh, so just starting my uh, starting my stretching for, um, I guess, what's probably going to be an eight kilometer run. Just something nice and cruisy. Nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. Just gradually trying to increase my pace. Um, you know, it's been a bit wild. Been thinking a lot about this, thinking a lot about this whole process of, of I guess, this doco and the couch to marathon story, and you know who it's important for, and I guess why it's important for me. Um, it's been interesting. It's like I'm not, you know, I'm not going to make the Olympic marathon team, the Olympic running team. I'm not a influencer or of any sort so it's been challenging to try and tell the story. I chose to run a marathon because I'd just gone through some major health changes both physically and mentally and I'd put in a lot of hard work to get to the point I'd gotten to and I decided that I wanted to prove to myself that I was the real deal and that all that hard work I'd put in was actually for a reason. So what I chose to do was I found the one thing that I notoriously hated the most, which was running. And I decided that I wanted to try and get as good at that as I could. So I started by going from a little bit of walking into a bit of running, a bit of running into a bit more running, and more running into a lot of running, until eventually I got to the point that I could run sort of seven, eight kilometers unbroken. And that was the point where I said, you know what? I want to prove this to myself the most, and I want to do a marathon. And that's how the story started. So the course on the day was uh, a 10 and a half K loop that you do um, that you do four times to, to achieve your 42.2 kilometers, which is a standard marathon distance. We gradually found ourselves ramping up to that. Never throughout this training phase did Musa run an entire marathon. He built it out slowly, starting with uh, a volume of nine to 11 miles in one week, and then gradually found himself at a top end of 40 to 50 miles in a week. So I guess the biggest change I've seen in Dave is probably, I'm probably confidence, not in the way that he wasn't sure of himself, but I guess maybe in you know a group sense, you know, he walked into here not knowing anyone, you know, he was, I wouldn't say shy, but you know, he was quiet and kept to himself to start off with. Um, whereas now it's literally the opposite. Everyone's just like, Dave, hey, and you know, and he's the same and you know, it, it's great. So we're currently en route to uh, the Noosa Marathon. Uh, we're just leaving Brisbane now. Uh, the nerves are pretty good. Everyone's pretty relaxed in the athlete check-in, uh, which is from about two to seven. And that's where you collect your race bib and they give you uh, any sort of the collateral that comes with it. And there is a Q&A, I don't know if we'll stay for that. Uh, we're probably gonna go suss the course out after that, have a look at the uh, have a look at the conditions, have a look at the track. And then from that point, uh, we'll probably take it easy for the rest of the night, have a have a good meal, nothing too crazy. And, uh, and probably get a little bit of stretching in and a little bit of walking in. So just checked into the Airbnb um, and so I guess this is a, a little bit of a dangerous period where you can probably overthink, uh, you know, you can overthink the whole process a little bit. So I guess uh, at the moment, um, definitely not sponsored, but uh, the big thing for me is just trying to get a bit of energy in the night before, get those stores in. So um, I'll have a little bit of, uh, have a little bit of a treat leading in um, before I have dinner tonight. And then after dinner tonight, we'll probably have some oats. Um, just try and get as much carb stores in the system uh, as possible and got this beautiful view behind us here of uh of the noosa resort uh which is quite nice and uh just a just a place to sort of relax and just lower the nerves and 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 bring the whole uh i guess bring the the, the mental temperature down uh, which is what i like to call it just stay nice cool calm and collected yeah yeah i'm at the top of my game it's only christ to blame we know the reason you came Diamonds and dollars and chains How about you? Sit back, I got this Relax, who said I chains up? Cause I said I'm a need racks Got plans on the right path Do my dance, cause I like that it's no chance. Your race number and your race tag And then um, they give you a, uh, a water bottle So we got up at about 4.30 The marathon was scheduled to start at 6.15 uh, I think the first priority was to get a little bit of food in the system um, Straight up 
uh, also get a bit of electrolytes in the system so that you know we had that really good solid bank uh, of energy uh, and then and I think uh, I think when you start to put on your gear for the day uh, that's when it gets really interesting because all of a sudden the whole event becomes really real then um, beyond that was to get dressed uh, get out on the road and to start doing a bit of warming up um, so that started with a bit of a light walk uh, into a bit of a light jog a few run throughs to try and really I guess get uh, get the fast twitch muscles activated uh, and then you know before we knew it, it it went past really quick we were at the starting line you know we were around everybody 608 um, the race officially starts at 615 um, behind me here everyone started to um, build up now you know we're forming into our zones uh, we'll run out of probably zone three or four because we're gonna finish uh, probably lower on the leaderboard but um, it's super exciting. I think it's a little bit nervy, um, but you know, had a good little warm up, and now it's just about getting stuck in and giving it my all. And you know, at the end of the day, that's all you can really do. Uh, everything that we've done to date is going to get me over the line. So. interesting man you know like once again I'm I haven't been haven't been super great at talking about it you know because one of the big things is I, I don't want to be seen as you know a guy that lost weight um, there's a lot more to me than that uh, but you know I, I got out to about 225 kilos not pounds and um, and that was quite a hard difficult point in my life you know I had to I had to confront that issue head-on and I had to make a lot of changes to to even get to the stage where I could think about running a marathon. If I'm comparing the difference, you know, from now to, to where this journey started when I was, uh, you know, when I just got back from living in the US to Australia and was weighing uh, about, you know, over, over 200 kilos. Um, you know, I didn't have a lot of answers back then. I had a lot of problems, um, didn't have many solutions, but I was really honest with myself and I was really accountable to what I needed to do to fix it. So, um, you know, the, the big difference that I see now in the person that I am uh, is that I'm someone who, you know, I don't get too focused on, on problems in life. You know, I get really focused on solutions. And I just, I hope that this story somehow empowers people and I hope that it, it lets people know that if you want to change something that you, you know, you, you can if you, if you want to do it. All right, coming down here and participating in something like this and watching people give it give it their all and knowing that um, this is something I set out to to do and to achieve. And I think um, I think for me it was like it's like if I got to walk this last 10 kilometres, then fuck I'll walk it. If I got to crawl the last 10 kilometres, I'll crawl it. Um, you know they've given me till one o'clock. It's 11 o'clock at the moment. So one volunteer on my way in pointed me to the finish line and said congratulations you've finished the marathon and I still had 10 and a half kilometers to go but they thought I was on my fourth and final lap when I was actually only on my third uh no 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 I'm not going into the finish line I actually need to go to the right here and I need to do a loop around because I still have another 10 and a half kilometers to do and I told that person sort of on the run like even my my ductors are blowing up like it's literally a full leg like if I try and get into a run 
legs just lock up and they're like not they're not working I got stopped by a volunteer and he said how are you and I said oh to be honest man I'm no good and he said oh are you you know are you gonna faint are you gonna pass out and I said no my mind's great I really don't want to get time capped and he basically said to me he said at this point in time I'll give you two hours if you can get back around the course in two hours that's the last ten and a half kilometers I will give you a time and I'll give you a medal that to me uh, was incentive enough to say you know what you've come 32 kilometers into this race and you wouldn't sort of just be letting down all the people that supported you you'd really be letting yourself down if you didn't finish this off because that's why I started doing this. I started doing this not because of what I could achieve in the first five or 10 kilometers, because everyone sort of can be a hero in the first five or 10 kilometers of a marathon. You know, the real heroics really comes in that final five and 10, where you really have nothing else to give. And whether you walk or whether you roll or whether you stumble or however you get over that line in the end, no matter what the time is, the simple fact that you push yourself through that last 10 kilometers, that's the difference. You know, well, that's the reason why I started doing this, you know, because this is what translates to the rest of my life.